What are you doing to prevent food shortages for yourself and your family? I have cucumbers that are starting to come in. Several different types of squash. A lot of potatoes and a bunch of corn coming in as well. Not to mention broccoli, peppers, carrots, tomatoes, herbs. I have a couple beautiful goats that'll be ready to harvest. This guy that's getting pretty chunky. There's five more little ones that won't be far behind and more on the way. Outside of prepping, which is kind of the obvious go-to to start with, you know, it's really good and pretty cheap to go get yourself a year's supply of rice and beans and flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, those kind of things that last a really long time. They're pretty affordable and you can get your calories in that way. But if you're thinking long term, more importantly than prepping and having food storage is to continually be able to create food on your homestead or in your backyard. Or even if I lived in an apartment, I would be growing an abundant amount of food. If I can grow food in the high desert of Arizona, then you definitely can grow food if you live anywhere further east than I do. It only rains around 11 inches annually here, and I'm currently capable of harvesting 14,000 gallons and storing 10,000 gallons of rainwater. I knew nothing about livestock or gardening two years ago, and now I'm growing more than enough vegetables for myself. I'm working on getting more fruit going and trees. I'm definitely producing all the meat that I need. Between my hoop house and this geothermal, I can grow all year round. Even an advanced gardener would say, that's a lot of potatoes. And what, we, what are you going to do with all of those potatoes in the high desert of Arizona? The point is to grow as much food as I possibly can and store it in this root cellar that I'm building here on my homestead. My root cellar is 6 by 6 by 8 feet deep, which is larger than enough to support a small family. Once you get down a few feet in the ground here, it's made up of caliche, which is nearly concrete. In fact, it has clays in it that are similar to, to what you find in concrete. Four or five feet of that is just caliche, just dug out in the ground. And then the top half is uh, sandbags. And then that's all reinforced with clay and dirt. And that way, when it rains, the water pulls away. So there's no chance of it collapsing. It's reinforced with rebar and barbed wire between every layer. And then the heavy timber on the top, not to mention all the shelving that's in there. It's really pretty structurally sound. My cat Annie clearly approves of the design and it should stay below 50 degrees year round. I don't know much about gardening, but something I do know is I like spaghetti squash. So when I harvest a spaghetti squash, I harvest all of the seeds and now I can grow a hundred times as many spaghetti squash as I could to start with. I've done the same with everything that I have grown I make sure to bring it to seed so that I can grow more of it later. The same goes for my livestock. I want to keep a breeding pair of any livestock that I plan to continue to grow. I slaughtered my buck goat because I have no intentions of continually breeding them. I'm going to phase them out. I prefer to raise the pigs and I think it'll be more affordable and more economical to focus mostly on one livestock. I spend about $100 a month on feed for all of my livestock. So if we look at just the pigs, which is what I plan to predominantly produce, we could easily cut that in half at least. So 50 bucks a month on feed. That means um, I'm averaging roughly, I could have, a, I could harvest a pig and harvest about 40 pounds of meat every month, which means I'm paying about $2 a pound for that meat and that doesn't account for the fact that soon I'll be growing a lot more feed for the livestock and that'll offset that cost as well. So who do you know that's going to the store and getting high quality pork for a dollar a pound? I sincerely believe that growing your own food, whether it's meat, fruit, vegetables, is the best way to avoid food shortage for you and your family. You really could grow a lot on the balcony of your apartment or in a spare bedroom or even in the living room if you had to. And I know that a lot of people are going to say that's fine and never give it a shot um, or just not feel like they could do it. So I'm going to give you one more piece of advice here. And if you just want the most basic entry level one year food storage that's pretty cheap, I'll show you how to put it together real quick. And that would just be rice and beans. And hopefully outside of that, you've at least got yourself a little herb garden and maybe some, some fruit and vegetables. Uh, you could easily grow a lot of potatoes at your apartment. So uh, we'll break it down for you. 
The average man weighs 180 pounds and eats 2,000 calories a day times 365 days is 730,000 divided by 2 gives you 365,000. So you, you need to eat 730,000 calories to survive the year. And if you divide that in half, you have 365,000 times rice is about 590 calories um, per pound. Oh, I did that wrong. 365,000 divided by 590 calories is 618 pounds. So you need to buy 618 pounds of rice or 620 pounds of rice. And then there's about 500, no, 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 450 calories in beans, like mostly, you know, black beans and such. So that's another 811 pounds that you need to purchase. So you can go over to Amazon or any place like Costco, find what would be a good long lasting rice and get the best economic value, you know. On Amazon right now, you can get three bags of beans for 15 bucks, which is 12 pounds, you know. So, um, so you need 811 pounds, and they're 12 pounds per package that are 15 bucks. So divided by 12, you need to get 67 or 68 of those packages. So 68... I think it might be $20 now. So that would be $1,300 just for your beans. So you need 618 pounds of rice. And there's you can get 15 pounds for 20 bucks. So divided by 15 pounds is 41 bags times 20 bucks. So that's another $824. So what we had, we had 1300 Oh, whoops. 824 plus I think it was 1360 so roughly you know $2,200 and you can have yourself a really cheap reliable year supply of food for you know for the person that just wants to have it they're just getting started and they just need you know to have a year supply of food I would I would suggest that it's better to have that by far than nothing and then this I think it was the CDC that recommended they're like well, you know, you should store at least 300 gallons per person, which isn't going to last you an incredibly long amount of time. But their point is, is that not everyone can store thousands and thousands of gallons. So, you know, it'd be good to get at least 300 gallons set aside. But a lot of residential areas, you could dig down 20 feet or less and have a well in your backyard that, the you know, maybe the city doesn't know about it. Well, the sun's going down soon. Hopefully you found the video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video. Email this video to yourself so that you'll have that information when you need it to start your one-year food storage and also other ideas about growing your own food. And, uh, well, if you got any questions, leave a comment below and I'll catch you on the next video.